It is the postseason in women's collegiate gymnastics. It is the regional round, and we are in Norman, Oklahoma at the Lloyd Noble Center as we get started on session one of round two of these regional championships. It is gonna be a good one. There are 32 teams from this point on trying to advance to the regional finals. And this session, this is what we are looking at. Alabama and Kentucky come in as the two highest seeded teams. Illinois and Iowa representing the Big Ten are the other two teams in this session. And you can see Kent State and Rutgers all have some individuals competing, trying to advance as individuals to the next round. So we shall see how that proceeds as well. I am John Rothsberger, joined by Olympian and NCAA champion Sam Peshek. Sam, just kind of give us a handicap of what we're about to see. I think we're going to see a lot of good gymnastics. As I was making my notes, I'm like, dang, it's going to be really hard to follow along in all four of these rotations because I want to watch everything. You know, you have Alabama, which is somebody and a team that I've enjoyed watching. Uh, they did not start the season how they look now. So I think their improvements are going to be phenomenal to watch throughout this whole meet. But you can't count out the other teams that are here because there's just so much parity, not just in this session but in the later session and across the country John it's going to be a lot of fun there are brackets if you are into the brackets I know we're in the coming to the end of the NCAA basketball tournament everybody loves brackets and there's brackets for women's gymnastics get online fill one out it's a lot of fun and you saw the format there of these regional championships and here we go you can see the Alabama team getting in a huddle over on the sidelines here we go with the four box this will be your format of the competition throughout so four gymnasts competing simultaneously iowa they're going to be starting the competition on vault illinois will be starting the competition on bars kentucky on floor exercise and alabama will be on the balance beam and you can see where they all are in the quad box sam you mentioned it a lot of action all at once we'll try to keep you updated the best we can Top left of your screen, you can see Iowa. Allison Zolke should be the first gymnast to go there. Rachel Borden for Illinois and bars. Ella Burgess for Alabama on beam. And Jillian Pukaski for Kentucky on floor. Oh, no, and, and, and not the way that Iowa wanted to start. First gymnast up, put her hands down on that Yurchenko full. There's a lot of pressure on this meet, so we might see some interesting errors just from the pressure alone. So as, as they're going here, you can see Alabama bottom left, Kentucky bottom right. Talk about for those two teams to start with the highest ranked teams in the session everyone expects them to get through but that's not always an easy place to compete as well you might not be as aggressive as you normally would Sam. yeah i mean it's interesting with a team like alabama that they're starting on balance beam which when we spoke to head coach Ash ashley johnston she said you know we started on Balance Beam at our last competition at SEC Championships, and she said we weren't perfect. We had some mistakes, but we fought through it, and I think it actually prepared us well for this competition, having to start on Balance Beam again. And somebody like Ella Burgess, just watching her up on Balance Beam, it never fails. I watch her in practice, and she just has this calming presence, her smile on Beam. It doesn't matter if she wobbles or not. You still just feel like she's relaxed and she's confident. That's the way that Alabama wanted to start this meet. Solid start for the Crimson Tide. Good start for Kentucky on floor as well. As they get ready for their second gymnast, Rachel Rubicki will be the second to go for Alabama. Mackenzie Wilson for Kentucky on floor. Caitlin Ewald for Illinois on the uneven bars. And Gianna Masella was the gymnast who started for vault um, for Iowa. I may have misspoken earlier in this rotation. Avery Chambers second to go. Allison Zolke will be the third gymnast to go for Iowa on vault. So now talk about... Go ahead, go ahead. You're probably going to hit the keys. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, the, the, the key for Iowa on vault is they want to do very clean stuck landings. Now, all teams are going to want to say that, but the trouble there is them knowing that they want to try and be as perfect as possible because I would consider them on the bubble here, that if they have a phenomenal meet, they could really contend with some of these other teams here. But again, if you try too hard to be perfect and go for those landings, and focus on it a little bit uh, obsessively, that's where we might see some mistakes. So the key for them is to really just do what they do every single day in practice. Gianna Masella started things off for Iowa, and you mentioned it, Sam, not the way they wanted to start, an 8.825, so they, they can drop a score. Remember, in women's gymnastics, six gymnasts compete on each event. The 
top five scores count so they can drop the low already for Iowa right out of the gate. Having that low score puts the rest of those athletes in a tough spot. They gotta hit. They wanna keep this close and maybe steal a spot in the next round of these regional championships. Bottom yeah, right of your screen, Mackenzie Wilson there for Kentucky starting things off and for Alabama on beam, Rachel Ribicki. Yeah, exactly where I wanted to look, John. Bottom right on floor, when we talked to head coach Tim Garrison, he said, the key for us, we have the skills. We just need to plan our feet on the landing. And I like how he said this, don't telegraph your face. And what he means by that is if you do have a little mistake or a little adjustment, don't let the judges know by your facial expressions. So they're working on the performance quality there. Ella Burgess started with a 9.9 .9 for Alabama on beam. 9.85 for Jillian Prokaski for Kentucky on floor in the leadoff spot. We'll give you scores as we get them. I like that final handstand up on bars. Working on these dismounts. Good, difficult, clean, full twisting, double back, and they should be extremely excited about that. Kentucky also finishing bottom right. That second gymnast in Alabama, bottom left, finishing up with another hit. Man, John, I can tell just how fast this competition is moving, and we've only seen a couple competitors. So if you're watching this, just stay with us. We are going to try and point out all the best things to watch. And bottom right right now is Ariana Patterson, and she's always really great for me to see on this event. Not only is she powerful but she has that long lean line and at sec she scored a 9-9 nine nine, so it's someone that could put up a decent number for them and actually her high score this season 9.975 so you talk about being able to put up a big number she can certainly do it she's in the third spot here shania adams in the third spot for alabama on beam getting ready to go still waiting for caitlin ewald's score on bars rachel borden started off for the illini with a 9.775 avery chambers for iowa on vault second gymnast to go 975 as allison zulke just finishes vault for iowa and it was a good vault she put it to her feet right now they just need to put the rest of their vaults to their feet in order to stay in it they do not want to count that vault i think if you're watching at home and you're wondering can iowa and illinois what do they need to do to keep pace with these two top 10 ranked teams from the SEC. You gotta see nine nines. If you're watching the scores, you need to see some nine nines from Illinois and Iowa. If you start to see too many nine sevens, nine eights are gonna put themselves in a hole most likely against these big time programs, Alabama and Kentucky. Yeah, I remember having a conversation with the Oklahoma head coach, KJ Kindler, and we're gonna see them a little bit later, but she said, in order to be a contender, your first gymnast up needs to go 9-9. And guess what? Alabama's first gymnast up went 9-9. So they are really proving that they are in it. They are here to compete. Another stuck dismount for Illinois on bars. They came to play today. Yeah, really they're high bar score is a 49-3-2-5. So for them, the coaches say that the key is don't hold back, just attack. And sometimes first rotation up is really good because you have a lot of that extra adrenaline, especially coming into a competition like the regional sem semifinals. I think the bars would be a hard event to start on. Did you have a, a favorite place, Sam, as an athlete where you were comfortable beginning a competition? I actually liked bars. It wasn't my best event, so I didn't put too much pressure on it. It just had to go up and hit, and that was my favorite for that reason. Man, Alabama's on fire, too, on beam. Another stuck landing. More importantly than that stuck, her chest position was totally vertical. Really beautiful. Gives the judges a great impression as she finishes that up. Hannah Castillo for Iowa getting ready to go, but here you go, a little drama early, if you want to call it that. Caitlin Ewald from Illinois in the second spot a career high, a 9-9 for Illinois. We mentioned Mallory Mizuki, who was right after her. I believe that was her stuck landing that we saw as well. So Illinois coming out strong early, maybe put some pressure on these top two teams and make it interesting down the stretch. They're doing exactly what they need to do. And you know what's interesting is bars is actually not their best event as a team. So I think if they can go and stick some dismounts, get some, you know, high nine eights, maybe nine nines, then the confidence factor that they're going to take into the second event, that's going to give them all the momentum they really need at the beginning of this meet. 
Big vault from Hannah Castillo, top left of your screen as we're waiting for Amelia Knight to start her bar routine. She follows Mizuki's 985. So good run so far for the Illini. Gabby Gladio about to mount the balance beam. Star freshman for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Tell you what, Sam, of all the freshmen in the country, she might not be the, the most standout freshman as far as scores are concerned, but her gymnastics is absolutely incredible to watch. Yeah, and you know what I always check for? Ba huge back handspring layout, two feet. Little wobble there, but she picks up. Doesn't look like it rattled her too much. And with the freshmen, you know, it's hard to explain the amount of pressure in a regional semifinal because all these teams are just so good. But their demeanor throughout season, and that's something that I noticed about Gabby, is she really doesn't have that wide-eyed, nervous-looking freshman demeanor, and that really stands out to me especially starting on an event like Balance Beam. Junior Isabella Magnelli, bottom right of your screen for Kentucky. She is the fourth gymnast to go following. Ariana Patterson's 9.9 .9 on floor. Shania Adams for Alabama on beam in the third spot, also a 9.9. .9. Top left, looking at vault. Huge Yurchenko layout full. I really like to see that flare position before she landed. Clean landing there. It's going to be a good number. Might be the best number for Iowa on vault so far. That was Karina Munoz in the fifth spot for Iowa, following Hannah Castillo's 9.8. So scores building a little bit. Haven't broken that 9.9 yet, have the Hawkeyes on the vault. Magnelli finishing on floor, bottom right of your screen, bottom left of your screen. Lily Hudson, she was a star freshman last year, now in her sophomore season. Such a huge part, Sam, of what this Alabama Crimson Tide team does. You know, Luisa Blanco, who we'll see in a moment on beam, is, is really their star all-arounder on this team. But Lily Hudson quietly is kind of the, the Robin to Luisa Blanco's Batman, right? Oh yeah, and I actually think Lily Hudson is one of the most underrated gymnasts in the country right now. She is so solid. You can tell she's a fierce competitor and she just handles pressure really well and is a very good all around gymnast. She has that strength, that dynamic component to her acro skills, but she also can perform and hit under pressure. And that really comes in clutch here in the postseason. Bottom right of your screen, Haley Davis for Kentucky getting ready to go. I believe that is Olivia O'Donnell for Illinois. She'll be the fifth gymnast to go. Munoz on vault, 9.875 with just Jacquavia Henderson now to go in the anchor position. You can see her getting ready to run down the vault runway for the Hawkeyes. She is the last gymnast to go on that event. Yeah, she's slated to do a Yurchenko layout full. She does have a more difficult vault, Yurchenko one and a half, but head coach Larissa Libby said she always struggles with deciding what to do because her Yurchenko layout full is so big and so clean, and she has a very great chance of sticking every single time, so it looks like they played it safe to increase that score potential there. There is, Iowa is done on vault, but there are individuals, as we mentioned earlier in this uh, Rotation, individuals competing on each event, trying to qualify. Rachel Dekovich, you can see her from Kent State getting ready to go on vault. We'll try to point those out as well. As we go through oh. in Illinois, unfortunately, Olivia O'Donnell with the fall, Sam. She follows a 9.275 from her teammates. So this is a critical moment for the Illini. Yeah, and I was actually just going to say that Olivia and Mia are really going to need to hit big scores for them. And they're two athletes on their team that can score big. Olivia just scored a 9-9 at Big Tens. And so you can tell she has beautiful lines when she hits. It's very limited deductions there. So I know she's, you know, really kicking herself right now for being too far away on that release move that she couldn't get the catch and they needed that hit. You can see right there, 9.275 for Amelia Knight. So now they're going to have to count a miss. And that is critical when you're trying to chase down in Alabama and in Kentucky, both ranked in the top 10, you cannot afford to do that. We'll see what happens now going forward. Lily Hudson finishing up with that Beamer team, gives the double flex, likes it. Haley Davis, bottom right, finishing up her floor team. 
really selling that last pass, exactly what head coach Tim Garrison told us that he was looking for from his team. He said, we're consistent, we put in the hard work. It's just those little details, that pizzazz factor that he wants to see them add here. Haley is ranked tied for 18th in the country on floor exercise, a top 25 athlete there. So a big competitor with one to go for Kentucky. That'll be Raina Worley in the anchor position, as you can see, bottom left of your screen. Now we're to the three box. Uh, the vault is complete. So we're gonna go down to three events, take, take one of those out for you so you can focus on the ones that are still competing. As we wait for Illinois' Olivia O'Donnell score, Mia Takakawa, I think you mentioned Sam will be in the anchor spot for Illinois and bars and they just they've got to go up and they've just got to hit the rest of the way hit routines don't count any more mistakes and try to knock it out of the park if they want to give this a, a shot to advance right yeah I mean it's it's a really tough spot to be in because even if Mia Takawa hits this routine they're still gonna have to count a fall but it's still crucial if they want to stay in it it's still early in the meet you don't know what the other teams are gonna do throughout this competition so this routine is crucial She's a and veteran, she's scored 995 before John. She actually shared the Big Ten title. So if there's any athlete that can handle this, it's Mia. And you said it, there's a lot of gymnastics yet to go. Everybody's gotta go through beam. You know, you're gonna have falls. Maybe Illinois needs a little help. And when I say that, maybe some mistakes from the top two teams, but still a lot of gymnastics to go. Anything can happen. You guys, you and I have been around long enough to know that a lot of crazy things can happen in the sport. You just got to keep hitting and hope you get your chance. Yeah, and the, the bottom of your screen, Luisa Blanco and Raina Worley are two of the best on these respective events. So hopefully you can look at two things at once here. Beautiful open full in for Raina, starting things off strong for Kentucky. Oh, wow. Fall for Luisa on her back handspring layout. Very uncharacteristic there. You know, I saw her actually fall in the, I think it was the touch warm up, um, which is pretty unlike her. So let's see how she finishes this routine. Luckily for them, they have five hit scores, so they don't necessarily need to count this one. But again, you don't really want to start having a fall, especially from one of your best athletes here no doubt throughout the rest of the routine. So that'll be interesting. We, we literally just got done talking about how you still need to, you know, still hit routines, anything can happen. And on cue, you know, one of the best in the business has a mistake on beam. And that, that means Alabama's gonna have to count a 975 in this rotation. And that is not something they normally do. Louisa finishing strong there and Raina Worley bottom right of your screen for Kentucky finishing strong there as well. Looks like Kentucky will have an early lead here after one rotation, Sam. Yeah, and you know, they don't have a crazy amount of difficulty. So on floor, the key for them is to be really particular with those landings and kind of execute to the best of their ability. And from the routines that I saw, it looks like they were able to get that done and just keep their heads down, score after score, put up some good numbers and they're sitting in a good spot, John. So Kentucky, Alabama done. All the teams now are done. Top center of your screen. This is Hannah Joyner from Rutgers, and she's really been something special for that Rutgers team, Sam. She's really brought them to another level. Definitely. I mean, gosh, since she's been a freshman, it's been really fun to see just how much she's, how much success she's had for this team, and she can compete. It doesn't matter with her team, without her team. She always is so solid. I'm seeing the good handstand positions from her. Wanting to finish with a stuffed dismount, double layout, little college stick there, but really good first routine for her as an individual. So the last gymnast to go in this rotation is an individual from Kent State. She is a sophomore from Royal Oaks, Michigan in Hunt's Gymnastics. Shannon Hunt, the owner of Hunt's Gymnastics, hopefully is watching this moment, her former athlete competing. This is Alyssa Guns. You know, as an individual, it's really hard to go the whole season and competing with your team and then have to compete without them at this competition. But I will say, in my experience, teams do a pretty good job of adopting these individual athletes, cheering for them, and hopefully making them feel like a 
temporary team there. Finishing up strong here. Double pike, little shy there on the landing. When you land, your chest needs to be in that vertical position in order to have no deductions there. But again, good first start for her. And you mentioned the, the teams supporting the individuals. You saw the Kentucky Wildcat team on the sideline giving some cheers to Alyssa Guns as she participates here as an individual from Kent State. So a strong start to this rotation for these teams. Alabama started strong on the balance beam with Ella Burgess. They did have some difficulty at the end with the miss, but this beautiful routine, 9.9 to get things going for the Crimson Tide. Oh, she is such a machine. I love watching her on this event. The way that she absorbs the beam is so beautiful. It's it's graceful. And then the performance quality all the way through her fingers to her face and her smile, it just lights up the competition. The high score for the Illini on the uneven bars. Caitlin Ewald with a 9.9, .9, her career high on this event. Yeah, and I really love the fact that she kind of let go a little early on that Delavac dismount, but was like, nope, I am sticking this no matter what. And you could tell there was a lot of grit in that routine. And the team with the lead after one rotation are the Kentucky Wildcats, and it is behind a strong performance from their veteran, Raina Worley, the high score in rotation one, 9.95 for this floor team. Yeah, listen, no surprise here. Uh, not one of us watching is surprised that she was so solid. Almost went for that stick there. Um, great performance across the board. They had some solid backup scores that they're counting. It's really a good first event to put them in the lead. And there is your standings after one, or the neat summary rather, after one rotation. Kentucky with that .275 lead. Iowa comes back after that early fall. Illinois has got a little work to do after counting a fall on the uneven bars. Alabama, same thing. A little struggle at the end there, but Kentucky, they are in the lead after one rotation. As Sam Peshik like to say, a lot of gymnastics yet to go. But Kentucky, after the first rotation, the early leaders here in Norman with session one of these regional second round. After one rotation, it's the University of Kentucky with a .275 lead. Iowa's vault, five scores above 975. Illinois with a couple of falls, but they had a 9-9 from Ewald. Alabama on beam finishes with Lisa Blanco's fall, but they did get five scores above the 975. But it's all Kentucky after the first rotation. Sam, your thoughts? Sam, go ahead and give us your thoughts on that first rotation. Yeah, you know what's interesting to me is we knew there was going to be a lot of drama just across the country, but I did not predict that on the first event, three of the four teams would have at least one fall. So I think that just goes to show just how much pressure these athletes are feeling and that it doesn't matter how prepared or how talented you are. It's who can hit their routines and the best of their ability on the day that it counts. So if anything, after that first rotation, we know anything can happen here in these regionals but we're going to talk about the seeds there's 16 seeded teams at the four regional sites four regionals trying to qualify to the ncaa championships and of those 16 seeds sam these are how they break down by conference talk about what this graphic means to you 
Yeah, you know, it's really interesting to see because I love the fact that they're spread out between these four conferences. I think in years past, there's definitely the SEC heavy and then maybe Pac-12 following that. But the fact that there's three teams from Big Ten and two from Big 12, it just shows the parity across the board. And I think, you know, on the inside gymnastics talk, there's been so many of us saying, you know, in years past, you know exactly which teams are going to make it out of regionals. And really this year, you don't. This is the step one of getting to the national championships but they still have to be on today because all four of these teams are fierce you can see after the first event just how close they are with falls and with them hitting these rotations and here is where these athletes, these teams rather will go in the second rotation kentucky to vault iowa to bars illinois to beam alabama to floor exercise what has to happen let's talk iowa and illinois we, we've been talking a little bit about them but iowa just a tenth back from alabama after one rotation what from this point on do these teams have to do to give themselves a chance to be in the top two after today? Iowa needs to be steady Eddie. They need to hit those landings, focus on the details, and I think they've done a good job recovering. Their first athlete up had a fall, and the fact that they're only one-tenth behind Alabama, who also had a mistake, I think it proves that they're still in this, and they really need to focus on the mentality, which actually head coach Larissa Libby said it's been a big focus for them leading into this competition. So top left of your screen, that is where the University of Kentucky will be in this rotation. They are on the vault. Top right, you can see Iowa, they move from vault to the uneven bars. Bottom left, Illinois. After a bit of a tough rotation on the uneven bars, they go to balance beam and Alabama. Bottom right is on floor exercise. And that it would be Maddie wow. Wallagora starting off with the Crimson Tide. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, John, I had to say wow in the middle of what you're saying because first gymnast up for Kentucky, Jillian Prokoski, stuck a really big Yurchenko layout full, and Tim Garrison was telling us just how important those landings have been for them, so it's good to see them showing up here today. That's one thing Tim Garrison, whenever I talk to him, all the coaches, but he really, he always is bringing up the stuck landings, how they're working on them. It seems like they have a love-hate relationship with stuck landings in Kentucky. Sometimes it seems like they can't help but stick, and other times it's, they can't buy a stick, but something they really work on hard, I'm sure like most of the teams, but he has got a passion for sticking those landings, no doubt. Yeah, those drills and, and really, you know, I asked him, sometimes if you bring up sticking too much, it kind of creates more mistakes than it helps. So he said, yeah, that's exactly why during the preseason through now, we've been doing lots of drills to trigger that muscle memory to allow their body to be in the correct spots as their feet hit the ground to put them in the best position to stick every single time. Maddie Wallagora, the Rochester, Michigan oh. native and senior finishing up on floor exercise and some trouble sand from Illinois and beam here early. Yeah, we're, we're seeing some mistakes from them, and you know, you can't help but think that they're nervous mistakes because they've done really well throughout this season, not the way they're wanting to show up here today. And that's one thing that we talked to head coach Natalie Walsh. She's in her sixth season as the Illini head coach, and she said her team has been incredibly consistent all season, and I'm sure it's frustrating to see them start off this way here early in this session. And another stuck vault, John, from Yeah, that was huge. huge. That was huge from Pike Pi Half from Mackenzie Wilson. Wow. And, it, you know, I loved our conversation with Tim. I'm going to keep bringing it up because he said, we're, we're continuing to get better. And I feel like that's every year that Kentucky is really has the recipe to peak at the right time. They start the season a little bit, you know, underrated or understated, if you will. And then they get to all these bigger competitions and they just do their job. And, you know, talk, I've talked a lot to Tim Garrison over the, his tenure at Kentucky. And the one thing he always said, he goes, we're not going to get maybe the top athletes right away, but you have to coach these athletes up. And that is one thing, even if you talk to other coaches around the country about Tim, he said he's really good at coaching up his athletes once they get there. And he's done that. And now he's starting to get some of this star power in. So the Kentucky Wildcats always right around that top 10 spot trying to maybe make a push this year. Who knows? At some, at some point, they're going to be the top eight, top four team in this country, I believe. Yeah, working hard there. If you look at the bottom right, that's Cam Machado for Alabama, and she's going in instead of Macari you commonly see in this place, and that's because Macari had 
a, a difficult fall, fall at practice day of SEC. So they're wanting her to rest as much as possible on this event because she's too important on the other events that she competes. Coaches think that Cam really has a very similar scoring potential here and they want to give her a shot. So Vault moving along for Kentucky. Mackenzie Wilson, 9.875 for that pick pike front half. Ariana Patterson does the same vault. The front pike half, Isabella Magnelli will be the fourth gymnast to go for Kentucky. She does that one as well. So some big vaults here in the middle of the Kentucky rotation. Mallory Mizuki in your bottom left for Illinois, following Amelia Knight's 9.125. So again, pressure early here for Illinois. Cannot count that 9.125. They need five hits in a row. Yeah, and Natalie Walsh, head coach of Illinois, did tell us, she said, man, the beam team does their best when they're relaxed and they just trust each other. And so I think, you know, coming off of having to count a fall in their first rotation, that doesn't put you in a very relaxed <laughs> setting. So hopefully she can hit this routine and put them back on track, not wanting to count another fall there for Illinois. And this routine is, is beautiful. Good rhythm throughout this routine. Finishing up here. Isabella Magnelli, top left. Iowa on bars, top right. Marissa Rojas follows a 9-8 from Masella. They also started with a 9-2. Did you see the vault there, Sam? Up I on did. the toes. I did. Went a little too hard for that stick. Needed to get her chest up more vertical, just slightly. I love the fact that Kentucky has three of those pike front halves. You know, I would think as an athlete, those are a little bit easier to stick than the one and a half. And to have three of them, you feel like you got control of the landing on three vaults for sure. Two one and a halfs yet to come, but your thoughts on that versus the one and a half, the two ten oh vaults we typically see. You know, I love talking about strategy on vault the last couple of years with so many of the changes and seeing what these coaches are doing. And for me, I agree with you. I think landing a blind landing is, is just such a wild card, but then you're going to see Oklahoma a little bit later and they seem to knock out those one and a halves out of the park. So it's interesting to see the choices between doing the more difficult vaults like the pike half and the one and a half versus a Yurchenko full that we commonly see, you know, from every single gymnast maybe just three years ago. Shania Adams is going for Alabama on floor exercise bottom right of your screen. She follows a 9.875 from Walagora and a 9.85 from Machado. Isabella Bella Magnelli gets a 9.8 for her vault as Raina Worley, top left of your screen, about to take a run down the runway. Jaquavia Henderson for Iowa getting ready to go on an even bar. As I mentioned, they started with a miss. So just like Illinois, they need to hit five in a row. You take a one and a half from Raina Worley. Finishes strong, not a stick, but extremely clean there. I liked her chest position when she landed. It's gonna be a good score. Top right, Jerquavia, they call her Q. She is back in the bar lineup and coaches say she just really provides a lot of stability being one of those veteran leaders for this team. Now we're looking at an angle. You see a little leg separation there, but the judges are on the side, so they're not quite seeing that angle. Now we're looking at an angle a little bit more conducive to what the judges are seeing here. Nice routine from Q there. Marissa Rojas right before her went 9775. So they hit two routines in a row after the start from Zulke with a 9-2. So Jacobia Henderson hits one, two yet to go for Iowa. Abby Mueller from Illinois finishing her beam routine. Mallory Mizuki right before her, a 9.85. Three yet to go for Illinois in that event. Randy Worley, 9.85 on vault, and this is Bridget Bork, the last Kentucky gymnast to go on this event. And goes for the one and a half. Coaches say that she was a little wild card because if they had a mistake, they were gonna play it safe and do a Yurchenko full for her. But of course we saw things actually went really well for Kentucky on vault. So great competition experience getting Bridget to go in that last spot with the difficult vault. 
It looks like Kentucky will start have only nine eight plus scores to count pending Bork's score. Most likely that'll be a, higher than a nine eight. So they had Paskey start with a nine seven seven five. Looks like they will be able to drop that. Alabama on four. Shania Adams a nine point eight seven five. And this should be Gabby Gladio for the Crimson Tide in the fourth position. And bottom left, you're seeing Mia Towns. She's a senior and kind of just had a, saw her have a moment with the beam. Most likely she's closing her eyes, she's visualizing, and there's a lot of pressure, especially when there's a mistake early on here in the lineups. And head coach Natalie Walsh does say about her, she is stoic and she can turn it on when she needs to and she is one of those athletes that leads by example and she needs to be a big example here hit under pressure for the Illini. That is Karina Munoz on bars for Iowa. Henderson got a 9.825. Really nice clean set for our uneven bars right there. They are getting pumped up, they're coming back. Seeing Mia Towns just really soak in these landings. She's doing a really good job absorbing the beam. Sharp rhythm, but also calm at the same time. Impressive beam work from her. Beautiful front toss. That can spring layout series, no problems there. Finishing up, if she can get this stick, this will be their highest beam score. Wow, that was the best she could do on that routine. It was incredible, especially under this pressure. You can see the athletes that enjoy the competition, they enjoy the pressure because they just lit up and actually do a better job the more pressure they have, definitely Mia Towns in that situation. But again, it's a team sport, so they need more scores to count in order to stay in this meet. Iowa on bar, center of your screen. Illinois on balance beam, bottom right. Again, Alabama on floor, two sides of the Hudson getting ready to go. Little hop on that landing there, but another good number. So let's Iowa take a look at their fourth gymnast, or last gymnast rather, on the uneven bars, Adeline Kenlin. Sorry, Sam, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's take a look at bottom right, Lily Hudson on floor. She has the potential to put up a huge score for Alabama, scored a 9.95 at SEC's. Layout to double full, big difficulty to get things started. Coach Ashley Johnson of Alabama. She said, we're a really great floor team. Sometimes they overthink. So she was actually happy that floor was second because she thought that they might settle in after the first rotation a little bit too much. The key for them is not trying to be too perfect on those leaps and jumps. On balance beam, bottom left, Ruchu Nataraj from Illinois. They contributor to that Illini team. They coach talks a lot about how important she is to their squad. Done a great job with them this season. And stage and look Rachel Kekovic. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, look how solid she is on beam. Every landing, she just really makes it clear to the judges that she was right on center of the beam, very confident landings, and she's gonna get rewarded for that. 
Rachel Dekovich from Kent State about to mount the uneven bars. She's the individual on that event, this rotation. Great finish yeah. for Nada uh, Raj on beam. Man, you know, they're doing such a good job here at the back end of the lineup, and it's such a bummer because you really want these scores to build momentum from start to finish. And, I mean, again, Mia Towns, you see in the background with a 9.85, and I really think that... You know, if they didn't have to count that fall on bars, they would really be right in it with everybody else right now. Huge double layout from Dekovich. See head coach Bryce Biggins in his 30th season coaching the Golden Flash. Illinois got one more beam worker. She's outstanding on this event. Mia Takakawa will be the anchor there. And they did start with a mid slam, that 9.125, but even though they haven't broken 9-9 nine, nine yet, they have hit four teams in a row. Still rating for Nataraja's score. That very well may break the 9-9 nine, nine barrier. But gutty performance after a fall, just like Iowa on the uneven bars. They started with a 9-2, and then they proceeded to hit five in a row. So doing what they have to do there is Luisa Blanco after that fall on beam. Here's her chance at redemption on the floor exercise. And she is just beautiful to watch on this event. She's currently tied for sixth on floor. She does such a good job of dancing right into her tumbling. I mean, you can't help but watch her and just have a good time, honestly. Nice second pass. You see her front foot slide just a little bit. Louisa would have to be perfect here, get a 10.0 for them to pass up Kentucky at the halfway point here in this session. Again, top two teams will advance to the regional finals, so winning it in and of itself isn't that important, although maybe other than building some momentum. Good side aerial backhand spring from Mia on beam, and you know, interestingly enough, she's in the anchor spot again. Having this routine be so crucial, just like she was on bars, she was able to handle the pressure there, and looks like she's doing a good job containing all those nerves here on beam. Luisa finishing up so strong, so beautiful on floor. Great comeback routine for her. I know she's Definitely going to put that first routine behind her. And that's got to feel good, Sam, after a mistake to just get a hit under your belt, get that positive energy going again. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you just need to brush it off, have a good routine, and then you're like, okay, I'm good. I'm back on track. What a beam routine from Takakawa when they needed it most. Beautiful. She's incredible to watch. I mean, everything she does, I mean, you just, you can tell the mentality that goes in there. A true athlete and really beautiful gymnastics as well. So we are not quite done yet. We have an individual get to go here on floor exercise. That's Carly France from Kent State. She's a senior from Marysville, Michigan. Has a high score on this event this season of a 9.925. Hannah Joyner will be going on the balance beam. Hannah in the first rotation. She is doing all around trying to qualify. She can qualify in individual events, but she can also qualify in the all around. She got a 9.85 on bars in the first rotation. Yeah, and she really is a true all around competitor. Pretty solid across the board. And you're going to see that here on her beam routine, just the way that. She presents herself. Rachel Dekovich from Kent State, a 9.8 for her uneven bar routine. And here we go with the last two individuals here in this second rotation. backhand spring layout, no built-in deductions. And so what I mean by that is her legs were completely straight in the air. There were no form deductions, and she didn't wobble on the landings. Her arms were straight on that backhand spring. Those are just a few of the things that judges might look for. It's hard to see with this angle, but she does also such a great job 
getting the extension on her leaps, which, you know, typically speaking, you either have a very powerful uh, trickster athlete or you have a very artistic, beautiful, stretched uh, leaps. And that's just not the case for Hannah. She is the perfect combination of both of them. Nice dismount. And again, couldn't have done anything better there on that Beamer team. She should be extremely happy. Hannah is an individual qualifier to the NCAA championships in 2022 on the balance beam. She's the first, first Rutgers gymnast to make that accomplishment on that event as we move over to the finish of our final routine here in this rotation. And look at all the Alabama girls hyping her up in the background. They're cheering for her like she's part of their team. I love that. It's so cool. I mean, I still remember some of the individuals that competed with us at a regional championships. And even though you go, don't go to the same team, you do still create that bond. And hopefully she's having a good time with, with the Alabama girls as well. So that'll do it for the second rotation here in session one. Some of the highlights of this rotation, Kentucky Vault. That's a highlight all in of itself, Sam. They came out strong. The first handspring front pike half of three was Mackenzie Wilson here with this 9.875. Yeah, look how big this is. Wow. She got such a great block off the table. Waited to do that half twist, which is what you want to see. And then, of course, getting the chest up on the landing. Great clean vault from her. Closing the gap a little bit, the Crimson Tide did on the Kentucky Wildcats, though, in this rotation. A big reason. Hudson and Blanco. Big tumbling, solid from start to finish. I mean, such a competitor. I expect nothing less from Lily Hudson. She got a 9-9, and Luisa Blanco matched it with her own 9-9. Yeah. Performance quality is always top-notch with Luisa, and of course, following that uncharacteristic ball, good for her to have some redemption here and have a good time. Put everything on her feet, put on a little performance and a little show, and she definitely got rewarded for that. Alabama's sitting pretty now. Summary after the second rotation, you can see that Kentucky lead now down to .075, but the interesting note, Kentucky and Alabama stretching out the distance between the top two teams and the third and fourth place team. Again, that is what is critical as we head into the second session today. Top two teams will advance, so you want to be in the top two. Iowa, Illinois, you can see they had a little bit of trouble, but also had some high points in this rotation, but they got some work to do if they want to break up this Alabama-Kentucky party. So after the second rotation, .075, the Kentucky Wildcats have the lead. The Crimson Tide in the second spot. They're going to be going over to the vault. vault. A lot of gymnastics yet to go. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. We talked a lot about the bracket. You know, you got March Madness. We got April Madness in women's gymnastics. And this is our portion of the regional bracket. There are four regions. Obviously, we're here in Norman. There's one in UCLA. There's one in Denver. And there's one in Pittsburgh. But this is how our region has played out. The play-in game, if you will, NC State, Ball State. NC State won that. They advanced to the second round of the regionals. Our session that we're watching now is up at the top, Alabama, Kentucky, Illinois, Iowa. Two of those teams will go to the regional final. Later today, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Arkansas, and NC State will battle for those two spots to get in the regional finals. And two teams out of that final go to the NCAA championship. So Sam, here's the point of the, the competition where we'd like to put you on the spot. Obviously, there's, there's high seeds. There's number one through four that are seeded in four different regions. But who are some of the teams that maybe might not be the, the headliners, if you will, that people want to watch for? You know, you talk about the headliners, and I, Florida is a headliner. But I'm going to say that people are going to be looking towards them because it's a team that hasn't made many mistakes this season. And all eyes are going to be on them, but they're, they're definitely able to put a great meet together and – put up really high scores from the leadoff position to the anchor position. And then if you're looking at the Los Angeles region, UCLA, they're at the top seed there as well. But uh, Utah's in that regional too. So you can't ignore the fact that they're ranked four and five in that regional session. In the Denver region, 
LSU is a team that I'm also looking for, and also Michigan State, who's ranked 10th. I know they're hungry after uh, not making it last year's regional, and they definitely have the ability to put up big scores. It looks like they're gaining momentum. And then here in this regional, obviously, you, you can't not talk about Oklahoma, but a team that I think is really continuing to improve is Alabama. And of course, that's the team that's in this session right here. John, what so about you? Uh, well, I, I was gonna ask you, Sam, who, who's gonna win it though? I mean, I wanna fill out my bracket and I wanna have the winner correct at the end. Tell me, tell me who I should, I'm penciling it in right now. Tell me who's gonna win this thing. Go yeah, ahead. well, you know, my, my roommate that knows nothing about gymnastics predicted Alabama this morning, and I was laughing because, you know, they're obviously a very strong contender, but this year, I think more than any other year, I really don't know. I mean, Oklahoma is a really tough team to beat. Uh, they're just technically beautiful. They're really amazing at sticks, so assuming all goes far, I think it's going to be between Oklahoma and Florida, but I also think UCLA is a wild card team. They have the talent, and they have the pizzazz factor, so can they hit the best of their ability, you know, when they need to? And, and those are kind of my overall thoughts. So if anybody's watching right now, just, just know that Sam went to UCLA. So there's a homer factor going on in there. So what to watch here in this session, in, in this rotation rather, excuse me, Alabama goes to the vault. They are seventh ranked in the country there. Kentucky goes to the uneven bars where they're a top 10 team. Iowa and Illinois, beam and floor exercise. They got a little work to do. Here's the number to think about. Alabama and Kentucky battling it out for first, 0 0.075 between the two, but between Alabama and Iowa now, it is a five-tenth difference. And then Illinois is a couple tenths behind Iowa. Sam, five-tenths in two rotations for a team like Iowa who goes to balance beam to catch a team like Alabama. Can it happen? If so, how does it happen? Man, I think that this is a tough one, you know, being this far behind. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but they really have to be lights out and then hope that either Alabama or Kentucky makes a few mistakes there. So I think for them, it's about hitting as strong as possible. And sometimes in this part of the competition, just staying in your own lane and, and putting up solid numbers is enough to feel really proud of yourself at the end of the so watch those bottom two, Iowa bottom left, that's Shaquavia Henderson getting things started there. Mia Takakawa will start on Illinois, bottom right. Haley Davis already on the bars for Kentucky, and Gabby Gladio, the freshman for Alabama, starting on vault. But those bottom two, you want to see some scores in the 9-9s coming out of there if they want to give themselves a chance at the upset. Uh, Alabama vault. starts with a stick there on vault. John, you and I saw the exact same thing there. As hot as vault seems to be, balance beam, every team that's gone there so far has had a fall. So Q looks to be starting off very strong. No built-in deductions. We talked about that earlier. Solid series, good arm positions throughout this beam routine. Looking to get a stick early on with big difficulty. I love to see it. Huge double back. Do not see a lot of double back dismounts off the balance beam. Big risk, but talk about an exclamation point if you can nail it. She does it very well. Jordan Paradise will be the second gymnast up on vault. Top left of your screen. Jillian Perkaski for Kentucky will be the next to go for them on the uneven bars. And Takakawa finishing up her floor team. She's selling it. Mia, bottom right for Illinois. It's an athlete that we continue to talk about. She's come in clutch on the first two rotations. And something that head coach Natalie Walsh talked about, which I thought was really interesting, is the first five seconds of the floor team being extremely important. She says that is the moment when you can really impress the judges right away. And Mia's doing a good job with those facial expressions and performance quality. Jordan Paradise with a big Yurchenko one and a half small hop on her landing as the Crimson Tide get into their 10-0 vaults. Gladio a 9.9 though for her. Yurchenko full starting from a 9.95, almost perfect. Kelly Davis on bars a 9.85 to start. This is Perkaski in the two spot for them as Alexa Ebling waits to go on balance beam for Iowa. Good clean combinations to start off this bar routine. She's working on, of course, those handstand positions, hitting vertical shape right there. Into a clean dismount. 
wanting to get those landings and she soaks it in. I think she rushes the salute a little yeah. bit. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the judges do, especially in the postseason with those, what I call a rushed finish. Just toes digging in. And, and when you got two judges during the regular season, you know, you got to just convince two that you stuck it. <laughs> here, here in the postseason, you got to convince four judges that that was a stick. And I don't think she's going to convince all four, but nonetheless, a good hit routine from Perkaski. Ari Dalgette, top left, getting ready to go. Alexa Ebling is on beam for Iowa following Henderson's 9.875. Makari's doing a one and a half. She scored a nine nine at SECs. And of course, like you mentioned, it's always more impressive to get higher scores in the postseason because there are more judges. And Makari is an athlete that can absolutely do that. And this is really an event that Alabama can get an edge on. So their first two gymnasts had really great performance. You see them start off with a 9.9. .9. Really impressive with that leadoff performance there. Makari goes one and a half. Oh, and a little bit shy on the landing. You can tell she missed the block and went a little bit too hard for the the stick position and under rotated, but didn't have a fall. Bailey Bunn to go on bars, follows a pair of 985s. And if we, if we want to create some drama, we don't have to try too hard. Magari Duggett with that air on the landing while Iowa starts off with a 9.875 and they have a hit from their second gymnast, Evelyn. Can they close the gap? Five tenths again after the second rotation going into the third. Top two make the regional finals. But if you want an athlete to go next, you want Lily Hudson to go next because she is such an icy competitor. Look at her, she's standing there, she's taking a big deep breath, going through all of her mental cues, and you know my prediction is she's gonna have no problem hitting this vault and getting them back on track. And of course, you know, she didn't, Macari didn't have a fall, but it's gonna be a significant deduction and hopefully a score they're gonna wanna drop. Senior Julia, wait for Illinois, bottom right of your screen. One of the leaders of that Illini team, not afraid to, according to head coach Natalie Walsh, not afraid to tell the team, hey, it's on us, let's get back to the gym, let's work harder, let's get better. And she is one of those important leaders for the Illini team and hits a routine there. Allison Zulke now for Iowa mounts the balance beam following Ebeling's 9.775. So 9.7 scores. Probably not going to help you as oh, Zulke with a big wobble. Got to be in the 9.9s nine here. What I say? Your tank go one and you a got half. It. Clean landing. She just rocks them out. Does her job. No one's surprised there. She is a cool, calm competitor. You can see the demeanor on her face. It always, you know, leading up to the routine, always just seems calm. Oh, and an unfortunate fall from Zulki on balance beam. You know, it's interesting talking to Iowa's head coach, Larissa Libby. She said, Beam's been a really great event for us. They've been good on the road, but unfortunately they had three falls at their conference championship on this event. And she said it really shook their confidence so leading up to this meet they they did beam brackets they they're trying to do everything they brought in sirens and loud music to try and rattle them but you know john like you and i both know it's really hard to simulate this type of pressure in a practice situation bailey bunny 9.925 for kentucky a career high score for her as de guzman finishes so four for four for the kentucky wildcats they are just in consistency mode here. Lily Hudson, a 9.9, .9, saying you called it. Is Luisa Blanco about to take to the ball? Julia Wade, a 9.775 for her. Abby Mueller about to go on floor exercise for Illinois. You know, this is a really important vault for Luisa Blanco. She needs to hit it. She has the potential to score big, but it hasn't always been super consistent. And she was a smart athlete because she didn't want to go for the stick and under rotate it. So she over rotated it, which again will be a deduction, but she put it to her feet and it was a great quality vault, exactly what they needed. And if you're watching gymnastics throughout the season, you've probably heard numerous times, always better to take a hop forward out of that vault than go backwards. The judges see those hops backwards and it's a bigger deduction. So that hop forward, probably a 10th Sam at least, but uh, certainly could have been, like you said, you try to stick it too hard, you go backwards, it's gonna kill you. Yeah, and you see her hugging her teammates right now and, and her demeanor, she's just disappointed. She knows that she can hit that vault a lot better and, and hopefully, 
Alabama is thinking they're qualifying to the, the regional finals, and hopefully they can have some redemption there. So Aubrey Nick will be the next gymnast to go for Iowa on beam. Pressure on her. She's following a fall from teammate Allison Zulke, a 9.075. They have to drop that score. Trying to catch Alabama, who currently sits in the second spot. Last gymnast to go for Alabama will be Shallon Olsen. She's got a huge vault, toughest vault done. She does a Yurchenko double twist. She is a world silver medalist on this event. This is the most difficult vault in the NCAAs right now. There's a few gymnasts across the country that do it. Shallon was, I think, the, one of the first ones to do it. And not as good as I saw her do it at SECs, but again, they just needed a really strong hit vault so they could drop Makari's lower score there. And they will drop Makari's 9.525, Luisa Blanco, a 9.8. I thought that was a little harsh on that very clean Yurchenko one and a half with a hop that looked like a one-tenth hop to me, but that's why I'm not a judge. So they finished strong there, though, as they are trying again to hold off Illinois and Iowa for the second spot to get into the regional finals. Kentucky, by the way, they have one gymnast yet to go. Raina Worley will be in the anchor spot. Shailen looks like right before her finished her routine, waiting for her score. Raina Worley needs to be consistent here. And she looks loose, John. You know, seeing these athletes, I like watching. It's almost like at weddings when people like to watch the groom look at the bride. That's how I am when it comes <laughs> to watching these athletes compete. I like to watch their demeanor before they salute because oftentimes it predicts how the routine is going to go. And an athlete like Lily Hudson we've been talking about and Raina Worley, you know that they have really strong mental game because they're loose before they even salute. Emily Lease will be the individual from Rutgers competing on the vault, top left of your screen. Marissa Rojas will be getting ready to go on balance beam for Iowa. And Rutu Nataraj is on for exercise for Illinois. Reina's doing a good job getting those handstand positions, opening those hips in the vertical shape. There she goes, gets it again, locks it in, just needs a stiff, stuck landing here. Full in. It wasn't stuck, but it was pretty close. So it's a good number. They're going to want to count that, and they're rocking and rolling. Emily Lease, by the way, top left of your screen, the individual trying to advance to the NCAA championships just smokes a Yurchenko one and a half. There's not a team on the floor right now that wouldn't love to have that ball <laughs> in their lineup. Well done. Spring. I can't yep. lay out there on beam. That is Marissa Rojas. She follows Aubrey next 9.75. I'd like to see a little bit more extension with those knees throughout these skills for Marissa on beam. Rutu Nataraj finishes her floor routine. She did touch out her first pass, a full end, so disappointing start to that routine. But that is the first mistake for Illinois, so they can potentially drop that score with two gymnasts yet to go. So Sam, one thing that we talked to Larissa Libby, the coach from Iowa, as you see her hugging the gymnast there, Melissa Rojas, Marissa Rojas. We, we talked about all the things she did and, and to get this team ready to compete and to make sure they got the best lineup. And the one thing that she talked about is, and is the athletes had a chance to kind of call out teammates and say, hey, I want I want to show head to head that, you know, my beam routine is better than your beam routine. And for you and I kind of in the interview, we're kind of laughing about it and having fun with it because I think Larissa wanted to have fun with it, but also use it as a way to put pressure on her athletes. But we kind of dubbed it the Hunger Games, right? And it's like, I want you. You know, what do you think of that? Would you like that as an athlete? Would that have gotten you fired up? I loved it. I think there's two types of gymnasts. There's gymnasts that uh, love to be athletes and compete, and there's gymnasts that love the performance more than they love the competition. And I was more of the, the competition, the athlete. You can tell which ones are here um, as well. So I would have really liked it. And it's interesting. They have the projected lineup for the week. And if you're in that alternate spot, like you mentioned, you can battle 
for a spot in the lineup. Now, it's not all the time that you're going to get absolute, picked for the right? lineup spot. Yeah, exactly. But she, as she mentioned, if you consistently are beating people in the lineup, she has no excuse but to put you in the lineup and give you a shot. So it gives everyone a fair shake during the week, and it also helps athletes like Jerquavia Henderson that um, have been in the lineup spot kind of put pressure on them a little bit and keep them sharp. Yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. Adeline Kenlin is the anchor here for Iowa on balance beam. Last year, she was second at the NCAA championships on this event. They need a big one from her here. She's so beautiful to watch on this event. Just the way that she works beam is extremely confident. Nice extension on her leaps. And what stands out to me is her arm positions. So check them out. Even on her dance positions, her arms always have a home. And that's what helps her stay so consistent, so steady, and so balanced. You know, she, she was off on that full turn and worked out of it, but probably won't even get a deduction for that because she did such a great job playing it off. And it's gonna be a huge score for them. You can tell just how excited <laughs> she, she is, is it. there. And, you and know, the Hunger to, Games work for them. There you go, she was hungry. You know, I talked to, to the, Larissa, the head coach of Iowa, at the first meet of the season, I covered them in Vegas at the Super 16. And, and you know, she talked about Adeline and she said she thought a Earlier that week, she might have had a, a season-ending injury, and they got some great news a few days later, and, and she didn't specify exactly what it was, but you saw the concern on her face, and, and here she is coming back all the way and being such a huge contributor to this team and so important. And Larissa even said, she goes, she is a star for this team, and you have Jacravia Henderson, who's also one of those stars, but Adeline Kenlin, so important to this Hawkeye team, and that routine, arguably one of the most important of the entire season for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, and they've had mistakes throughout the season, but never had to count one like they did at their conference championships. And so, you know, Larissa said they were doing everything in their power to kind of test them leading into this to build their confidence back up in the gym. And it looks like, you know, everything they did is working out so far because they have five hit routines there. There will be an individual to go on balance beam yet from Kent State, Rachel Dekovich. We've seen her earlier today as well. But the only two events still going, balance beam and floor exercise. Floor exercise, one gymnast to go, that is Mia Towns. She's getting focused, and look at that cool skill on beam to start things off. One arm scale, don't see too many of those, Sam. Yeah, I love the individuals that bring the unique quality to their routines and really makes them stand out. And you have to imagine that's how they got here in the first place, how they qualified as an individual. Going for a series here, back handspring layout. I'd like to see her absorb the beam a little bit longer, bend that front knee on the lunge to really show off minimal deductions on her series. Nice finish. Well done, Rachel doing all around here as an individual. We saw her earlier compete on the uneven bars, 9.8 there, as well as vault where she got a 9.725. So as an individual, you need to be the highest scoring person that is not part of the two teams that qualify to the NCAA championship. So after all those athletes are taken out of the equation, you need to be the next highest individual to qualify to the NCAAs as an individual. Basically, if you win between the two sessions, if you win your event today, you are going to the NCAAs. Man, I'm loving this performance quality. This is something that head coach Natalie Walsh was really proud of her team for. And she's backing it up with strong tumbling, open with a front handspring double full. They got signs in the background. They're all doing her routines, hyping her up.
strong leap combination. And a really great last routine for Illinois. They're starting to gain some momentum back there. And that is absolutely a great finish for them. Scores for Illinois on Florks' size. Ruchu Nataraj did have that miss with a 9.15. They will drop that, but they went 985, 9.775, 9.8, 9.85, and then whatever Mia Towns gets here, which very well could be their high score of that rotation. So good finish for them, good scores, but the problem is Alabama, who is in second going into this third rotation, looks to still maintain that spot, but the difference between second and third continues to grow. It was five tenths between them and Iowa. Now it is up to six tenths. And again, that is the most important thing here in this session, be in the top two. And it looks like Kentucky, Alabama, if they can just hit five of their six solid routines, we'll get that job done. Hannah Joyner now competing for Rutgers. Again, like Rachel Dekovic, she is doing all around here today. And so far she has done beam, nine, nine there, outstanding score possibly a, a score that could get her into the NCAA championships as an individual. Obviously, we've got to wait for a lot more gymnastics yet to come. We also, also competed bars where she scored a 9.85. So solid competition so far for Hannah Joyner. Here she is on floor exercise. Yeah, I had the opportunity of hanging out with her the last two summers, and she has just a calm personality, very even keeled, and you can see that reflected in her gymnastics as well. And I think that's what help, helps her perform so well. Opens with a good double pike. Big double pike, a lot of air. Hannah holds the school record for Rutgers in the all around, 39.575. You talk about some of these individual athletes and man, she, Hannah Joyner could really join any college team right now in the country and be a competitor in their lineup. So it's an athlete that just is so phenomenal. Umi Salim Beasley, the head coach of Rutgers in her fifth season, really done an amazing job with that program. 2022, five of the top 10 scores in program history were achieved. Obviously has brought up Hannah Joyner as one of their stars here currently. And certainly a team I think on the rise and a team to watch in the future. She is really Got a culture and a vibe going on at Rutgers that I think is going to do great things coming up. And a great routine from Hannah. That wraps up competition here in rotation. Number three, Alabama and Kentucky continue to roll for Alabama on vault. Great finish to their rotation, but it started with Gabby Gladio in this huge Yurchenko full, Sam. Man, she really rocks this leadoff position. This is not the first time I've seen her do a Yurchenko full like this. She just, like, sticks to that ground no matter what. It's amazing. And then Lily Hudson came in clutch after a, a little bit of a mistake from her teammates. Yurchenko, one and a half, does a great job finishing strong. Big high fives from Justin Spring there. The new assistant coach for Alabama, Justin Spring, loving his time there so far. We go over to the bars. Kentucky continues to roll. Bailey Bunn, Raina Worley with a pair of 9.925s. Beautiful double layout dismount. Fights the landing so easily. And Raina coming in clutch, like you mentioned, John, here at the end, getting all those handstands to vertical. Working hard to get this dismount very clean at the end. Kentucky just seems like they are calm and on a roll, just getting the job done, doing what they need to do to advance. You can see after the third rotation, that lead goes back to 0.275 highlights for Alabama on vault, that Lily Hudson vault that we saw, Bailey Bunn. There are actually three 9.925s from Kentucky on bars. What a rotation for them. Iowa, Adeline Kenlin, what a Beamer team, 9.925. Outstanding performance in Mia Towns finishing for Illinois on floor exercise. 
with that 9.9. Some great gymnastics all around, but the drama between second and third, it spreads out and Alabama distancing themselves, Kentucky in the top spot. They are going to the fourth rotation. Kentucky and bars, Alabama on vault, Illinois. Correction, Kentucky on beam, Alabama on bars, vault for Illinois and Iowa on floor exercise. The NCAA Gymnastics Championship, you heard it, that's a superpower. You're gonna see all the superpowers at that event. It's gonna be outstanding April 13th and 15th. We're gonna be in Fort Worth. It's gonna be some amazing gymnastics. It'll be riveting, Sam and I will be there. But in the meantime, we are here, Norman Regional. We're in the top bracket currently, Alabama, Kentucky, Illinois, Iowa battling out for those two spots. It looks like Alabama, Kentucky, Sam have got a handle on those two spots to advance to the regional final. But let's tease everybody and talk about what's going to happen in the next session. We've got the number one team in the country. Yeah, Oklahoma is going to be a really tough team to beat, but Ohio State and Arkansas are, are back to back and haven't competed against each other yet this season. So I think that's a really exciting battle that I can't wait for. And then you can't help but talk about NC State because they're the first and only team who has ever gone from the play in day to make it to the regional finals. They did that uh, in a few years ago. So the fact that they have the confidence knowing they could do it again, I think that adds an extra wild card in there too, John. So you're saying anything can happen in that next session, kind of like this one. You know, talk about yep. this one briefly too. Six tenths now between Iowa and Alabama for the second spot. Illinois is a little over two tenths behind Iowa. Talk about that drama. Can it happen? What, what can we expect? Yeah, I think coming into this meet, Iowa and Iowa and Illinois really had a chance. I think that their scoring potential was there, but they made a lot of mistakes early in the competition and really put them in a hole. So that uh, distance between first and second is definitely growing. But Alabama hasn't been perfect this meet either. So there is a chance in this last rotation. But, uh, you know, the way it's looking is it's going to be Alabama and Kentucky. It certainly looks that way, and, and you kind of alluded to it a little bit there. Alabama has not been perfect. I think their coaches would agree. They've had some ups and downs, and it might be a situation Iowa and Illinois look at it and go, dang it, we, we had our opportunities. And again, not over. Alabama goes to bars. They are great on that event, 12th in the nation, but you got to let go of the bar, and you got to catch the bar, and that is not an automatic. Kentucky at balance beam, I always say, Sam, the meet doesn't start till you go to balance beam, but if they stay on, they've got to feel good about it there. But but Iowa, a very strong floor team. So, you know, get some energy going. They love to entertain on that event. Get some energy going. Maybe, maybe you put a little pressure on the top teams. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely true. And I think every team wants to end on a high note. So they're going to be putting their best foot forward regardless. So like you mentioned, I can't wait to see Iowa's performance on floor. I think that's a really fun team to watch. Kentucky's been extremely consistent. Alabama is one of the best in the nation on this event. Um, and so I think just uh, across the board, it's going to be a fun last rotation. And speaking of that last rotation, top left of your screen, Illinois will finish the competition on vault. Top right of your screen, Alabama on the uneven bars. Bottom left, Kentucky on balance beam. Shaylin looks like already has the green light to start things off for the Wildcats. And bottom right, Iowa, Hannah Castillo starting her routine for the Hawkeyes. They've got to bring it. Don't hold back. You got to go big. If you're Iowa, if you're Illinois, you got to stick some vaults. Yeah, and I want to look at Shaylin on beam. She is so solid, so beautiful. She scored a 995 at SECs. So it's someone that's a, a really good position for this lead off spot. Beautiful. Good, good back handspring layout. And again, the job for the lead off competitor might be the most important, especially on this rotation. Last event on balance beam. Kentucky is sitting in a really good spot, but you still want to have that icy competitor go first and set the tone for the team. Lily Hudson starting off with the Crimson Tide, top right of your screen. Getting that momentum going, as you mentioned, Sam, nails it, stuck the landing. Perfect start for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, they're feeling good over there. They've, again, not had a perfect meet so far, but I think we've seen a lot of highlights and bright spots, so they might take this as a learning moment heading into that regional finals. Wow, another great beam routine from Shaylin. She is an amazing person, might be the perfect person for that role. 
Sam, when we talked to Tim Garrison, the head coach from Kentucky earlier this week, he said about Beam, and, and Beam isn't his event. Rachel, his, her, his uh, wife, is actually the main Beam coach, but he said of all the events, if we hit our potential, he thinks Beam is their best event. Yeah, he said compositionally it's their strongest because they have a lot of difficulty. They have some triple series, and all of their athletes hit them so well. And I think this late in the season, it's all about reducing their – built-in deductions, and they have very little on this event. So they need to be confident and go in and hit. And, you know, we talk about Tim Garrison. He's pretty serious a lot of the time, very intense. And he said, you know, Beam is not usually fun for me to watch, but I actually like watching Beam. It's actually fun to watch this Beam, routine, beam rotation for us. And so just seeing him have so much fun on this routine, this event for them is, is special. I can understand not wanting to watch Beam. I'll be fully honest. My sister was a gymnast, and although I was younger than her, I couldn't handle watching her compete Beam. So I can't imagine the head coach watching that event. As we continue, Kara's German on, from Alabama on bars follows Lily Hudson's 9.85. Yeah, she caught a little weird on that release move and is really struggling to get that momentum back. She's just a freshman, and she hasn't competed all season on this event, but if she hits, she has a pretty high scoring potential. So I think that they're working on getting her competitive experience in the postseason to see if it's an athlete they can count on for the rest of postseason. She gets the job done there. Julia Waite, meanwhile, for Illinois. Beautiful Yurchenko layout half. Small hop on the landing, but some energy from the Illini. Hannah Castillo, meanwhile, for Iowa on floor, starts things off with a 9.8. And Emily Erb, the next gymnast to go for the Hawkeyes. Double Pike It's an athlete that also doesn't have as much competitive experience, but is really working hard in the gym and has earned this spot to compete. Michaela Green about to go for Illinois on vault. On the balance beam, Jillian Prokaski for Kentucky finishes up rather with, after Shaylin looks like scores a 9.825 in the leadoff spot. Yurchenko full, clean landing. See how excited she is there. They want to finish on a high note. And don't forget too, these teams that, that may not advance to the next round of the regionals or the NCAA championship, individuals from those teams can also qualify as individuals. So it's not just uh, the individuals competing in this session without their teams. It's all the members of the teams that don't advance can also get individuals in, into the NCAA championships. Good distance away from the bar on that catch. This is Maddie Walagora. She's a senior. Scored a 9-9 at SECs. Watch this dismount. One of the hardest in the NCAA. Normally she sticks that dismount. Hop forward, but other than that, that was the biggest deduction I saw in that routine. She follows Karis German's 9.75, so a little bit low there. Jillian Perkaski, though, for Kentucky on beam, also in the 9.7. She gets a 9.775 as Bailey Bunn is currently going on balance beam for the Wildcats. Yeah, head coach Tim Garrison said, something I'm really proud of watching this team is they do really hard assignments in the gym and they knock them out. So he feels really confident with this team. There's that triple series. He's really proud of his team for hitting well. And gosh, it's so beautiful. I like the aggressiveness that we see from Kentucky on beam, especially on this last event. Not all teams like to finish on balance beam for their last rotation. I don't think I'd like to start on beam, finish on beam, or do it in between. I, I would just, uh, I would think I'd be a three event specialist. <laughs> Bailey Libby now for Iowa, the daughter of head coach Larissa Libby is the third gymnast to go. Score She's going to start off. Her was a 9775. Sorry, Sam. Yeah, starting off with that E pass for an answering double full.
one and a half to lay out. Beautiful extension and toe point. Cam Machado on bars for Alabama. Nice handstand position. Good form. Next fusion. Wow. A lot of height on that release move. She has such good execution on this bar routine. Not the most difficult dismount, but she usually always sticks it like that. And man, she can put up a high number for Alabama on bars. Outstanding job, Maddie Wallagora, right before a 9.85. So a pair of 9.85s and a 9.75 for Alabama. They have two left to go, Doggett and Blanco. Ariana Patterson getting loosened up next to the balance beam for Kentucky. She will be their fourth gymnast. Waiting for Mia Towns' score. As Rutu Nataraj will be the next gymnast to go for Illinois on vault. Mia Towns unfortunately fell on her vault. Just a 9-2 for her. Adeline Kenlin will be the next gymnast to go for Iowa as Bailey Libby finishes up bottom right of your screen, top right of your screen. Makari Doggett, Sam, I covered Alabama, Kentucky up in Lexington earlier this year, and that athlete right there put up a perfect 10. Such a big competitor for this team on this event. Yeah, and she actually was not in the bar lineup at SEC's on the practice day. She had a weird fall and just kind of tweaked her neck. She was okay, but she did not compete there, and I thought it's really interesting. We're not seeing Jordan Paradise in the lineup, and I, you know, gave head coach Ashley Johnson a little bit of a hard time because Jordan scored a 9.9 .9 at SEC's, and that's just how deep this team is on bars. So, Makari taking her spot back here, and like you mentioned, John, has the ability to put up a perfect score I mean, look at that extension, that height. And her double layout, as you're going to see it in a minute, I, no one in college gymnastics does it better. It is big time. Watch this. Nice. Wow. Perfect stretch hips. She hit the timing right. She opens right before she lands. Perfectly stuck. You know, we oftentimes talk about that college stick, and it is not the case for the Makari Doggett on that double layout. Adeline Kenlin now on floor exercise, bottom right. Ariana Patterson following Bailey Bunce, 9-9. Kentucky just has to stay on here the rest of the way, and they will advance. Iowa is a team that has put up some high numbers. Their highest score this season on floor is a 49-4-5. Area Ward with that beautiful Yurchenko full to finish up the rotation for Illinois on vault. Hannah Joyner, the individual yet to go on that event. Lisa Blanco, the final gymnast for Alabama, mounting the uneven bars, 9.95 from Makari Doggett. And that's after Cam Machado's 9.9. .9. Great finish for the Crimson Tide here. Man, and Luisa is starting off strong. No deductions that I see so far. Alabama went lights out at SECs. They're hoping to do it again here. Luisa has the ability to score 9.95 and up. It's definitely gonna be that, in my opinion. Incredible job finishing that meet. Man, this is gonna be a really big bar score for Alabama. And so for Alabama, they already have five hit routines in the books, and what that means is they are in. They cannot be caught by Illinois or Iowa. Obviously, we're still waiting for two more routines for Kentucky. They need one of those to be a hit routine, and they will be in as well. Ariana Patterson, a career high, 9.95. This is Raina Worley on beam. Illinois is done on vault. That is Hannah Joyner from Rutgers finishing up her competition as well. Iowa still with two yet to go. Karina Munoz will be next for the Hawkeyes.
You know, I'm watching Reyna on beam, and she just does such a good job moving through her skills. You can tell when she's a little bit off. I can tell she's a little crooked on some of her skills, and she doesn't even move on the landing, and I think that's why she scores so high, is she doesn't make deductions a big deal. This whole Kentucky team is just sailing now, John. I love it. You saw the dismount right there. She stuck it, and she could have stood up and slid her feet together, but she just hung out there for you know, a little it. half second. Yeah. Milk it a little bit, show it off, enjoy the moment. I love it. Freshman Karina Munoz now from East Brunswick, New Jersey. Next to go on floor exercise, Coach Larissa Libby says she has really developed a star personality. And to really pull people in with her performance. Wow, big double layout. I love how she finished that. You, she just owns it. You know, sometimes freshmen come in and they're a little nervous. I don't think she's nervous at all. <laughs> she, she looks has great. Brought the she has brought the dance party to Thursday afternoon. Unbelievable. <laughs> Isabella McNally now for Kentucky. We'll finish things off for them there. Raina Worley, a 9-9. Kentucky will advance. Oh, man, this is such a good floor team. She did go out of bounds, so that'll be a deduction there. But I'm really enjoying this performance. Hey, put a note in your notebook, fans, if you're at home. Karina Munoz, you want to keep an eye on this athlete in the years to come. So much fun to watch. Wow, and you know, bad news. So if you were as entranced with this floor team as I was, you probably missed it. But unfortunately, Isabella Magnelli had a fall on her triple series. And I actually watched what happened. She was completely crooked on that first layout and still went for the second one and, and really just didn't have a chance to fight and stay on there. Luisa Blanco for Alabama finished with a 9.975 for that uneven bar routine. That is a career high score for her. Luckily for Kentucky, they had five hit routines. So this is going to be the score that they're going to want to drop. And it was one of those things that you could tell she was just off from the beginning. And sometimes mistakes happen like that. And that's why you need your whole team to hit their routines just in case an uh-oh happens. So Jacravia Henderson, you want to talk about athletes that are fun to watch on an event. Q, as they like to call her, on floor exercise is about a good a pairing as you're going to find in all of gymnastics. And yes, Iowa is, is not going to advance as a team, but don't forget, individual qualifications are still at stake. And this is a big, big moment for her as an individual and a chance for Jaquavia to represent the Hawkeyes at the NCAA championships, but she's got to go big. It feels like 995 plus is what it will take. And you can just see her standing there, very calm demeanor. This is a strong event for Q. And actually, you know, head coach says, I don't know why Q does not get a 10. She goes, we analyze every inch of this floor routine and they really feel like it has the ability to go perfect 10. Maybe we'll see it here tonight. And Larissa told me at that first meet of the season, early January, we talked about Jaquavia and she had been coming off some injuries in the summer, hadn't really been able to train as much as she wanted to. But she said, and I have this in quotes, it says, she should be a Nationals gymnast. Here is her chance. Most likely won't be a 10, huge full in, but took a step out of it. Might be a slight deduction there. On beam, that is Stephanie Zanella from Rutgers. Digging in, trying to save it, and she does.
Front tuck into that double back. No problems there. And finishing on beam. But beautiful dismount, had to hop out of it. You can tell she's a little disappointed with her wobbles there. Stephanie Zanella, a junior from Bellmead, New Jersey. Quavia Henderson finishing up on balance beam. That will do it, or floor exercise rather, excuse me. That will do it for the Iowa Hawkeyes as a team here at these regional championships. Just one gymnast yet to go from Kent State. Rachel Dakovich will be the last performer here in session one. Rachel's night has looked like this. Last rotation on balance beam, a 9.75 for her. Bars a 9.8 and vault a 9.75. So doing the all around, just like Hannah Joyner. And this will be her final performance. And luckily for her, she's got everyone cheering for her now. You know, other teams that are on different events really notice the individual competitors, really want to come together to support them. And I think she's going to have a big support system here for this last routine of the session. Here we go, final performance of this session one, in the second round of these regional championships. Of course, judges are looking for that performance quality. They're also looking for good landings, height on the tumbling passes, and the overall performance quality here. Jaquavia Henderson, by the way, a 9.925 for her floor performance. The dream is still alive to qualify as an individual for the NCAAs on that event. Opens up big full in. Now I'm really noticing the level of difficulty at this regional championships. And really throughout this season, I love that the teams are pushing the boundaries here. You don't have to do that big of a difficulty, but the fact that they are and they're doing it well, I think is really showcasing the level of gymnastics, just how much is improving. just a little bit. I always worry, even though it's not a deduction to have a sting mat or a four inch mat, I always feel like it causes more issues than it helps. So really unfortunate to see that there. So disappointing finish for her on what was an otherwise solid night for Rachel. But that wraps it up here for the fourth rotation of this session one. Alabama, Sam, they brought it here in this rotation, tried to close the gap. Here's Doggett. They're an amazing bar team. Look at this beautiful stretch double layout, finds the landing so easily. And Louisa showing off all her stunning, elegant lines, getting those handstand positions, and of course, rocking that dismount with a tuck full in. They Beautiful finished that rotation with a 9.95 and a 9.975 respectively, but it was Patterson and Worley keeping the distance, keeping them ahead. Nice backhand spring layout. And Reyna, the rock, the solid competitor for Kentucky that we've seen for years, does it again, finishing round off one and a half, gets the landing, no problem. So they... Top two teams get the job done here in this session. Kentucky with the win in this session. Alabama in second. Those two teams will advance, followed by Iowa, Illinois. Don't go away. We're going to wrap things up. You're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be riveting. 
Welcome back to session one of the second round of the regional championships here in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm John Roethlisberger, Sam Peshek. Sam, after this session, Kentucky, the top score, 197-475, Alabama, one-tenth behind him. So the battle we thought would ensue definitely did. Iowa looked like for a while they are going to put some pressure on the Crimson Tide, but just couldn't maintain that. Illinois having a bit of a rough competition. They finished this session in fourth. But, Sam, the big reason, Kentucky at the top. Raina Worley, she gets the job done big time here in this first session. She's so consistent. She has the big skills. She lands really well. And you just know what you're going to get every single time when she competes. Check it out. Not many built-in deductions. So with her, it's great or even better is what we're seeing. And she comes in clutch. You saw a little wobble there, but she works out of it and really does an amazing job minimizing all her deductions. And, deductions, and I think that's what makes her such a big clutch performer for Kentucky. Another stuck landing. Here's the difficulty I'm talking about. She's doing a Yurchenko one and a half. Good clean positions in the air. Nice chest possession, position, vertical landing, and heading to bars. Does a nice job making sure she gets all those handstands, locking them out right there. Finishing with a strong full end dismount. No problems there. So outstanding job from Raina World and the Kentucky Wildcats. I think, I tell you what, the, the regional final here. I think everybody's anticipating another Kentucky-Alabama battle for the second spot. A lot of people think Oklahoma is going to advance as we look at the brackets. Sam, talk about the next session. That There could be some drama. 16th ranked Ohio State, 17th ranked Arkansas. Only one can advance if you assume Oklahoma's in. All I can say is the four teams we just watched are phenomenal teams, and all four teams had a fall. So uh, everyone's feeling the heat, John, a little bit. So I'm curious to see what the next four set of teams, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Arkansas, and NC State, are going to do. Because I think we can expect that teams are going to have mistakes. So it's about which teams can recover and adjust from those mistakes uh, the quickest and uh, the most the best. So I'm really interested to see what they're going to put on the competition floor to who is going to advance I wanna here. I want to put you on the spot, but I'm not going to do it. I want you to tell me who's going to advance out of the next session. Already this session. <laughs> I said I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let you off the hook. You got to tune in, though. It's coming up 8 Eastern, 7 Central. It's the next session here from Norman, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Arkansas, NC State. It'll be a good one. Congratulations to Alabama and Kentucky. They will advance. For Sam Peshek, I am John Roethlisberger. So long from this first session of the second round of the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Championships. A lot of gymnastics get to come. It's April. Madness in women's gymnastics.